It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. And a pleasant good evening to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network. Back for another high school football season. It officially, in my estimation anyway, kicks off here tonight on the Brevard Sports Network with the coaches' shows, and we couldn't be more excited about the lineup right now for week one. We're going to start off tonight with Corey Broomfield in Beyond that, I believe Coach David Kintai will be second. Maybe Ryan Schneider. Beyond that, I don't know who's going to be coming up next. So just stay tuned for there. But a couple of things. Uh, I know Justin Warden's here as well. And Jake Owens has entered the building as well. So uh, just a couple of things I want to talk about before we bring in Corey Broomfield. And I don't know if you had an opportunity to see our post that we put up last week in regards to Brevard County High School football coaches. So let's just recap real quick, if we could here. Currently, there are 15 high schools playing FHSAA, three playing in the Sunshine State Conference, two, two in Brevard County now playing eight-man football. Twelve head coaches are either in their first or second season here in Brevard County. Mark Ainsley, the Heritage Panthers head coach, is the elder statesman. Nine years at Heritage, 12 years straight as a head coach. Four coaches last year from the Merritt Island staff are now head coaches in Brevard County. They are John Holmes in Titusville, as well as Hurley Brown at Holy Trinity, Tyler Murray at Merritt Island, and Brian Helton at Satellite. So six Head coaches have been with their team four years or more. So that is the current situation. There are seven, seven new head coaches in the county this season. And uh, but we we begin tonight. Come on, Corey. We begin tonight with an elder statesman. Uh, He is the head football coach for the Bayside Bears. Coach Broomfield is entering season number five and coach always wants to make sure that uh, he was four and six last year right <laughs> four, i put three and six on the screen on purpose just to mess with him yeah he was four and six last year uh i did that to you on purpose i appreciate coach. it i appreciate yeah. it welcome thank to, you welcome back for another year of the coaches show yes sir um so coach how does it feel to be you know you look around the county it's now you mark justin Chris Sands, Ryan, and you, you're yep. the elder statesman guy. What, yeah. what, you know, tell me about that. Uh, it's a good feeling. Uh, me and Ryan, we was just talking, uh, you know, when we came in, things we wanted to get done, and we've been able to get a lot of that. You know, he's been doing a lot more winning than myself, but we ain't got fired. We ain't been arrested, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't been fired, and you ain't been arrested. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Coach, how's the off season been? I know you've been competing in a yep. lot of seven on seven. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell me how that's going. Uh, it's been excellent. Uh, the, a lot of kids uh, got to see where they're at. The guys that are supposed to be what they're supposed to be, they've been showing up. And a lot of our young guys, like I tell them, we want to get reps throughout the summer. You take that month of June, and you really want to see what you got going on, and you want to compete against other teams. And then in July, you really want to hone in on yourself and see how good can we get before we go into the season. So it's been exciting, man. We've seen a lot of talented teams, a lot of talented kids, and we've been able to stack up for the most part. So we're looking forward to it. Coach, you've been able to, with a great deal of success, put kids in college and playing uh, high school football. Uh, Talk about that and what that mantra is at Bayside in doing that. Well, I tell kids all the time. You know, a lot of times kids think they, they see the one kid on the team that's talented, for you to get a scholarship after your sophomore or freshman year, you got to be a very, very talented player. Everybody is not going to be that guy. But the guys that stick around, you stick around, you really should, should take off between your junior and senior season. Right. And when you do that, you trust the process. At the end of your senior season, offers will start coming in and you'll sign. 
everybody's not going to be a five-star Power 5 kid, and we really try to make sure the kids understand that and they get that done. That's tough coming from a guy that was a four or five star. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I got my first scholarship offer at the end of my junior, going into my senior spring. Right. That's when I got my first offer, and I was damn good. <laughs> uh, you played in the SEC, right? <laughs> I mean, one of my favorite highlights is watching you uh, with a pick six in the egg bowl. Yes, that's got to be one of your career. Uh, absolutely, that's that's one of them. But I tell the kids, we were just talking about this today. Uh, I grew up a Florida Gator. Fun and gun. I love Steve Spurrier. I, I, I loved it. And I wasn't good enough to go to Florida. Um, so what? You know, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't good enough. That year they signed Joe Hayden and Janoris Jenkins. You know those guys, no, right? I know those guys. So I wasn't good enough. I know so. Corey Bluefield more than <laughs> those. So go ahead. So I had to go to Mississippi State. And uh, the highlight of my college career is my junior year at Mississippi State, we played Florida. And we beat them in the swamp, and that was the game that everybody remember Urban Meyer walking off the stadium. He didn't shake hands, and I think he resigned a few weeks later. So <laughs> he, if he would have recruited me, you never know. He'll still be in Florida. He'll still be in Florida. <laughs> Coach, this year one of the big changes in high school football is the Metro to yep. the suburb yep. division. I got it up on the screen. First, how do you feel about it? Um, for me, it doesn't really change too much. I'm just trying to get to the playoffs. Uh, but for my, my other coaching buddies in town, I think it's excellent. You know, you look at guys like Coco, uh, Rockledge, they get an opportunity to go play in a state title. Myself, I don't like it. I was telling Coach that when, I, when we get to the point where I'm playing for a state title, I want to know I'm the best Don't you want to play best. the best? I want to play the best. Uh, I want to know, no doubt about it, I beat the best team out there. But, hey, I ain't over that. I'm just I'm just trying to trying to win a few games so I can be with those guys. You, you are in the same classification as Satellite O'Galley, yep. Rockledge, and Merritt Island. Um, that's a tough tough district. Absolutely. Uh, I think the only other one really that that would mirror that is uh, that uh, seven or six. Well, I don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> nobody that four, I, nobody four four, <laughs> four, four S with uh, Vieira yeah, yeah. Heritage yeah, uh, yeah, Harmony and Melbourne. That's so, a good one. Coach, uh, taking a look at your coaching staff, Chris Eves, Mac McLeese, uh, France Palamis, Kevin Pierre, Wayne Strasser, Levio Lazeri, and you got Lacey Hills, a volunteer. Yep. Anybody I'm missing? Uh, not right now. Hopefully uh, somebody watching the broadcast, we're still taking coaches. So what if you, you want to join, what kind of coach you I need? I need a wideout coach. I need a running back coach. I need a DB coach. I need a linebacker. Well, well, well. I'm just playing. <laughs> Whatever you, you can do. You want to see if I'm paying attention is what it is. Hey, if you want to help out, come help out. We need bodies, man. That's, I was just talking with Coach Schneider. Uh, seriously, guys that's in Bavard County, if you want to coach, most of the schools in the program can use your help. So There's no doubt about it. Um, and it would just be on a volunteer basis or would they have? I got a stipend. There you go. He's got a stipend. <laughs> For you. Oh, by the way, uh, no, we won't get into that. Um, Coach, taking a look at the program history from 2011 to 2021, a program that's 48 and 76. Yep. 15 and 26 overall. I know you haven't had the season you're looking for yet in terms of that 7 and 3, right, 6 right, and 4 right. season. Yep. But you, your patience, the way you're building this program, yep. every year is something different, um, something new. Where do you get that from? Uh, that's just kind of how I'm built. Uh, you look at my father. My father's a landscaper, and he's a, a, a builder on the side. And the way I grew up, uh, guys that grew up with me all summer, I grew up, I woke up, and I went to work, and then we went to work out. So that's just kind of how I'm built. My grandfather laid towel. My dad's a landscaper. So that's how we built. We, we hard workers, and we're going to do what it takes, however long it takes to get it done. That's, that's what I'm going to do. You look at your team this year, Coach. Absolutely. And you've got speed. Mm -hmm. You've got probably – one of the most underrated wide receiving yep. cores in the county. Absolutely. There is absolutely no <laughs> doubt about that. And, you know, if there is a wide receiver coach out there that wants to come in, they're going to get an <laughs> oh, opportunity yeah. to coach a D1, absolutely. D5 player. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us about some of these wide receivers you got. Uh, so, as you mentioned, the first guy, Michael Parks, a uh, great kid. Uh, he's committed to Iowa State. Uh, he had about 40 catches, about 850 yards, nine touchdowns. Uh, he's a great kid, and he's gonna, he sets the tone for the whole team. Most of the time, you know, wide outs, they get the rep of throw me the damn ball, Keyshawn Johnson. Right, style. right. He's the exact opposite of that. Uh, and, and I love him for that. He's a kid. When he's not there, you notice it. You know, the whole, the whole mood changes. Um, he's a guy that's bought in. And he's, he's a base side guy in the fact of he didn't show up and he was a power five kid. His sophomore year, he got benched. And he had to work his way up to become a player. And now he's one of the better players in the county, if not the state. So. How would you make him see the light? 
Uh, he saw it himself. That bench make you see a lot of things. Right. Right. <laughs> that, the bench will make you see. Uh, you're not lying about that. So uh, back in the old days, it used to be the splinters coming right. up that make you feel <laughs> that old things. But uh, uh, how about uh, that defense, Coach? What's that defense? Uh, the like? defense, I'm very excited about our defense. Obviously, uh, it's led by D lineman Adam Kasai. Uh, he's a guy that picked up a few offers earlier this year. Uh, my secondary, Travion Butler. Uh, he's a safety. He's going to be good for us. I got a big time corner in Deshaun Harper. Yes, you uh, do. He picked up an offer from US, U, USF. But I'm really excited about the sleep of the year is my inside linebacker. He's a sophomore, LaQuentin Thompson. Keep a name on him. LaQuentin Thompson. LaQuentin Thompson. He's going to be a good one for us. Uh, he's a guy that this summer I, I picked on him all summer, and I, and I challenged him to show up for workouts. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's a guy that like to miss. And he's been showing up. And he's, he's, got he's, he's a video and game player this summer, right? <laughs> I don't know what he do. I think he eat Twinkies all day. He's <laughs> but he was chubby. there, huh? <laughs> but he's been showing up. Good. So I'm very proud of him and looking forward to what he does this year. Uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same on the other side of the football. Yep. Uh, a Brave him. Yes, sir. He's yes, sir. under center. <laughs> uh, talk about, uh, talk uh, about the newest Brave I'm him. very excited about him. Just like his brother, he's very smart. So my but he's OC, right-handed, right? Yes, he's right-handed. My, uh, my OC been out of town. So I've been having to run the offense, and uh, I can just tell him if I get the call wrong, he fixes it for me. So he's one of those type kids that uh, he's on point. He's real sharp. He knows what to do. And uh, I'm just working on him just like I was talking to you the other day at 7-on-7, seven seven, speeding up his process and being more confident in what he does um, and being a leader for those guys. Can you protect him? Absolutely, absolutely. This is one of our bigger old lines that I've had since I've been here. Um, we're excited about what we got up front, and we think they can get the job done. You know, one of the toughest players in this county to replace this year is Justice Durant. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, it's funny. I would call it Justice today. It's is, is <laughs> Justice Durant. Uh, probably the best underrated yep, back in yep, this county. Absolutely. Uh, even, you know, I remember a couple of years ago when you went up against Coco. Uh, he tore him up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he had a day against Coco. <laughs> Offensively and defensively, yeah, yeah. he did. Uh, who's going to be toting the rock? Uh, that's a good question. I wish I wish you could tell me. RBC, <laughs> right? Running yeah. back by committee. Right now, the guy that's uh, been leading throughout the summer is uh, David Francis. We call him Larry because he looks like Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, <laughs> he, he's, he's got to go right now. Uh, he's been showing up. Like I said, hey, we – Guys that do what we ask them to do, they're gonna get, they're gonna play. So he's been, the, he's been one of the guys that's been showing up and doing it. Uh, we're really excited about him. He was a little banged up in the spring, so he didn't get to go in the spring. Um, but we're looking forward to him. So remember that name, David Francis. Uh, Coach, I gotta tell you, you know, when I come down to Bayside, it's a fantastic electric atmosphere yes, down sir, there yes, on sir. Friday nights. Appreciate There's that. There's no doubt about it. I enjoy coming down there. Although I could do without the mosquitoes <laughs> on top of the roof, <laughs> up on top of the press box, but. Uh, what, what is it? I know it's your alum. Yep, Tell yep. me about that community and just why, you you know, the endearment you gotcha. have for it. Well, like we say, uh, at Bayside, Coach Davis, uh, Coach Mike Davis, he built something very special when he was there and I was a player. And the mantra was brother to brother, life or death. And we carried that on all the way till today. So when you come and you see a lot of guys on the sideline, you see people in the stands, uh, Palm Bay is a hard-working city. Uh, you know, we got a lot of entrepreneurs, people that work for themselves, and we take pride in what we do. So football is one of those things that we take pride in in the South. I know you're from the North. You, you front like you like football, but we, we take it to another <laughs> level down here. But uh, it's front. really it's really exciting. to <laughs> High school football is one of those things that unite the community, right. and uh, especially in Bayside. You know, Bayside we always looked at as the little brother to Palm Bay, and, you know, uh, and we kind of had to build it by ourselves. You're out there by yourself. So it's a unique uh, atmosphere out there. I front like I'll I just like. Play. I, I know, know you're a quarterback. I front. <laughs> I wasn't a very good one, but I front <laughs> like I like football. I love it. I, I love do. it. Uh, taking a look at the schedule, Coach. You're, again, we said you're in 3S, and I'm going to put it back up on the screen here. Let's go through it. Yep. Uh, as you look at your schedule this year, uh, the combined record of your opponents is 68 and 45. Uh-oh. This ain't no easy. This no, ain't it ain't. A, this ain't easy peasy lemon squeezy yes, here. Yes, sir. Uh, coach, uh, at Seabreeze in the kickoff classic, yep. at Palm Bay, uh, at Holy Trinity, at Fort Pierce. Uh, who put this schedule together to put you <laughs> on the road for the first four games? Hey, that's just the way it happened. Right? <laughs> I ain't got to paint the field for four weeks. <laughs> you got to uh, time it up like that. You do have one big time game yes, to sir. kick it yes, off sir. at home against Rockledge. Yes, sir. And then a much-deserved bye. Uh, then you're back on the road again yes. at O'Galley before you face off against Vieira, Merritt Island, at Satellite, 
Jensen Beach and home to Heritage. Yes, sir. Uh, you have got on your schedule this year six playoff teams yes, sir. from last year. Wouldn't have it any other way. What is it about uh, you guys and in, in, in playing these teams? You know, you, to be the best, you got to beat the best. Absolutely. Uh, that, that motto I first heard from Dan Burke yep. down in Palm Bay. Yep. But is it a Palm Bay thing? Uh, well, anybody that's played football at a high level, you understand that you can't hide, you know. Um, and what you'll find is it's high school football. You know, we played, we just played Mainland and we played West Orange, and everybody, oh, they're scared. It was 7-3, to three, I mean 7-0 to zero right. and 3-0. to zero. It's right. high school football. So once you get that out of your system, that, oh, he's, he's another teenager just like me, you're fine. So the, the more you get acclimated to that, the higher you're going to get. If you don't push yourself the whole season, you ain't going to never know what you, what you got. Once you take, I, uh, my coach always said, once you take that first punch in the mouth, right. Slaughter Zinsky, you're going to be just fine. Exactly. Wipe exactly. the blood off and go back out there. Uh, coach, if there were one thing you wanted everybody to know about this program mm-hmm. and the direction it is heading, yep. what is it? Uh, that we're going to play with relentless effort. Uh, this year, we're, we're a younger team. Like I said, we, we're going to probably start about 16, 15 sophomores. Um, but, but what we're strong at, like, like you said, we got two senior wideouts, and uh, we got a few seniors on defense, and we're going to be an exciting team, and we're going to play hard. I mean, we're going to play hard, and the chip's going to fall where they're at. But I can guarantee you the guys that are out there, they're going to be all in, and they're going to play for each other. One of the things this year that you're going to have an opportunity to do, uh, I can't remember which head coach it was, but – I think you're going to move into second place all time starting this season yep. with the most years coaching there. What does that mean to you to be able to um, have been at your alma mater this yep. long? That, that's exciting. That's exciting to me, um, you know, and I get to set something that when I leave, my name will, my name will still be around somewhere hopefully. Um, and just showing kids that, you know, you can be loyal in, in today's society and you, you can, can show up and still do what you need to do and be successful. So I'm excited about that. What is Bayside's brand of football? <sighs> We're going to play defense. I tell kids all the time, our number one plan, when we, when we put up the plan to win, the number one thing is play great defense, win the turnover battle, score in the red zone, and win, and win the special teams battle. That's what we do. So we're going to play great defense. That's what we're going to be known for. I absolutely love talking to this guy. He is simply one of the best there is in this <laughs> county. There is no doubt about that. He is the head coach of the Bayside Bears. I know he's got to get out of here early because he was actually early today, <laughs> which is incredible. Corey Broomfield of the Bayside Bears. Coach, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to step aside. When we come back, we'll be back with the next coach here on Brevard Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk-On. Walk-Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. All right, welcome back here to Walk-Ons in beautiful downtown Vieira. And we are here with our next head football coach. And he is in his second season. And all he did in his first season was lead his program to their best season in 35 years. And a regional regional runner-up finish last year. Please help me welcome the head coach for the Melbourne Bulldogs, uh, Mr. David Kintai. Coach, how you doing? Pretty good. Thank you, Alan. It's great to have you here, Coach. Um, I know you want to introduce Jamal right Jamal's now. Jamal's right behind me. All right, tell me, tell me about you. Send the camera Jamal's that way. Jamal's actually going to come on board with us and help out. A Mel High graduate went to Troy. This is a kind of legacy thing that I want to get more involved at Mel High, and that's why I asked him to come. When did I, he graduate? What year did you graduate? 2012. 2012. How important is it, Coach, as a guy that went to the University of Miami, a satellite alum, you know the importance of bringing players back to the program. You still love the a lot of people. A lot of people. About that. A lot of people don't realize or remember uh, because I didn't have a career in the NFL. I didn't move on. Everybody's looking at Michael Irvin, Jerome Brown, who's passed, and all the stuff. And the great players, Bernie Kosar, it goes through Testaverde, of course. You go back to the old, old school when I was there. 
we are the guys that started it at the University of Miami. My years there are the guys that came back to say, we're passing the torch. You've got to continue this, which went through the Rocks years and into the 90s and carried that on. It's kind of ingrained in all of us. And when we go back, when I sit there and talk, even guys that I didn't play ball with, Rohan Marley and I just had a nice conversation earlier this year when I was back at UM looking at stuff. We end up as a brotherhood over a decade. And it changes the way that everybody looks at everything. I want Mel High. We have such great people like Jamal in the community that are still here and that, that I want back just to contribute and be part of and bring that back. Part of the culture change, isn't it? I try. I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. But I want the community. It's about community to me. It's about the people in the neighborhood. Let's keep the community strong. Let's make it strong. Pretty good jump start because I don't think you have a better community. And I love them all. But... You know, I I know a lot of people down in Melbourne. I know a lot of people in a lot of sports. As you just saw going through what you guys did for softball was a Those girls are awesome. Tremendous job, Coach. Um, But that Melbourne football community is as tight as any in this county. And the the history of that foot is the first state champ in 1966. Absolutely. Bird Wingham wins that title. Interestingly enough. You and Bird Wingham are the only head coaches to have the type of years you had your first year. Tough shoes to fill in year two, um, I can tell you that. I didn't know that. You just kind of jinxed me. Cause, Don't do that, cause, please. Because Bird had that in 65. And, of course, the Bulldogs won a state championship in 66. But, Coach, that Melbourne community is is, is fantastic. Um, let's, look, let's look back at last year here real quick. Uh, did you ever think in a million years that's how that season would end up when you stepped on that field? in july absolutely not it was a building year i was hoping to bring everybody together uh we started off really rough um the reality of it is that uh you know we started off with a great first half in the preseason classic and then melted down and then we get up against Merritt island who goes on to the state championship and we struggled with them we didn't move the ball really well on offense we only scored once and we do all that as we go through we improved each week I take the blame for the loss to Satellite. Grant, it's my alumni, it's my school and everything else. But when we got down on the three-yard line, I should have calmed everybody down and just punched it in. We'd have won that game 14-13, and I take the loss on that one. Well, From you, that point you have to forward, fight Hunter Turner on that one because he told me the same thing. Nah, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was, that was, that was, the, uh, that was just you know, my first year, everybody working together and not having it straight. And I, I, I won't put that on Hunter. I'm going to take that one on me, though Hunter's a great guy for – trying to take that that's you know this is where we should add a little better control at that point very next week we start winning and the kids got tighter and tighter and when we started winning and they started realizing what it was to be together and the better together that's on the back of the shirt like the one he's wearing that is their motto that's the kids came up with that and that was where we are better together and they started gelling you know coach um with the year that you had last year and the players that you have returning expectation levels are through the roof i had hunter turner and cody black in the studios and we talked and we talked about those expectations and what's expected of them um and they're fully aware and they both know uh what it means to step on that field in a couple of weeks and start to prepare for the 2022 season what do you tell you you know you you've played in those into those expectations as a player you've coached in them as a coach what, are you, what, what is that message going to be on day one to a team that steps on the field with as high as expectations as your football team does? And you can't hide that. You can't hide it, and you get there, and we've got a lot of guys coming back that already know the system that we're running. And so what happens when we walk out on that field is it's it, taken from one of my old coaches. It's attitude plus effort equals performance. Bottom line is if they have that positive attitude and they give me that effort in practice every day. Perfect practice makes perfect, not practice right so it's the old story and to be honest with you both of those sayings that i just said came from howard schnellenberger and jimmy johnson when i was playing for them so you go back to the things that actually make you great are execute in practice get it perfect in practice and know it like the back of your hand so in the game it becomes automatic it becomes an automatic reaction defensively offensively what we have to perform comes down to that 30 second drill in practice did we do it right your coaches, you, Stephen Hughes, John Knudsen, Jeff Panucci, Scott Grish, uh, Brand- I can't pronounce Brandomir's last name. Coach J- Bada's actually not with us now, but thank okay, you. All okay, right. that's uh, Coach Bada. Jerry Freeze. 
Freesey, yep. Okay, and now you got Jamal. I've got Jamal. I've got a few others coming on. Who else on. we got? I've brought on a coach Moore to help with the receivers. Okay. We have Kat Clawson, who was with us last year. Okay. A lot of these coaches that I'm bringing on now are also going to help us. Ron Lugo is back with us. He's okay. been with us in years past with the defensive line. He and Jamal are actually going to be taking over that defensive front with Panucci. Coach Freese does the linebackers, and they're going to get got that you. all going together. I've brought in a number of coaches for positions to make sure we have that. And I also hired a smaller staff, which I'm going to meet with tomorrow night. It's going to have our JV program completely separate. So we are actually teaching how to play the game to these incoming ninth graders so they can go from there to earning a starting job, not learning when they get to varsity. What is Melbourne, uh, what is Melbourne Bulldog football? What is that brand of football? I'm so detail-oriented, Dan. We could be here all night. Well, that's okay. I mean, I our, mean, I... our brand, Melbourne football has a tradition just like Jamal. We have Jamal. We have the guys that have been there in the past. I'm going to go back further than him. You had Dallas Cameron that came out of there years mm-hmm. ago, went to Miami with me, and then went on to De- Denver. You have the history that goes with Melbourne, and football has always been successful. The legacy that's there. I played against it in high school. I've gone down the road. Is I make jokes sometimes because I played on that football field when it was grass and the parking lot was where the gym is. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But, but um, Melbourne football has always been grind, get it in there, and do it. What we've done is we're still that. I still want to focus on the run in your face. Let's grind it down and make it happen. We had 1,500 yards rushing last year. Yeah. We didn't really. Michael Galvin was phenomenal. For not being a running back, he was phenomenal and became a team leader doing that for us it's building and filling those positions now so that we can take the attitude of a bulldog and get every position filled with that guy with the positive attitude and the effort we're just going to continue to move forward you know um if you look at this football team i think at least as an outsider looking in i I think you look at this team and if i'm lining up your strengths on one side i got the quarterback play as one i got your defensive line as one i got your defensive backs as another so yes that defense is two of those three core strengths for this football team uh cody black chase alexander all the guys up front on that offensive line and then you look at that defensive line uh Markeel Ford watching. You've got names that people know in this county that are going to make some big time impacts. Absolutely. on the gridiron. Absolutely. this year. I got to ask you this, Coach. Are you a fan of the new uh, Metro suburb? Because I said earlier to Coach Broomfield, I, I as I, look all the all the credit in the world to uh, the Class Three S Region Three, but for my money. I think your classification with Vieira, Heritage, Harmony, and Melbourne is the toughest in Brevard County. I believe that. As an equal, as an equal combat, yeah. 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 I, I, I believe that to be true. I think w- what gets lost or what's happened is breakdowns. If we want to go that route, Brevard County, I think we underestimate Brevard County because we have Rockledge is strong. Coco's always strong. Merritt Island is phenomenal last year and is going to come back this year. I'm looking at what, what Tyler's doing and what's going to happen there. Um, I mean, I'm even looking at what's going to happen in the future. John Holmes, now I love him up at Titusville. That's a great hire. You basically are looking at balancing out Brevard County again with great coaches, great people. We're going to continue to grow where we kind of had gotten down to even Mel High had slipped off for a while, but we're back. And what we're going to do is I think as the county grows, we need to make sure that we're growing. We're getting more exposure into Orlando. We're getting more exposure into other areas. It's going to open up more doors for our kids too. I don't think, and I said this to Coach Schneider, um, you know, with the new Metro Suburb thing, yeah, I, I think Coco and Rockledge catches a break with not having to go down and play those teams from Miami. I don't think you guys caught a break. I don't think anything changes we for you. Uh, it doesn't change for us because when you look at that, when we go down through the Suburban, we're still going to have to go through Vero Beach. We're still going to have to go through. Uh, it, it's still going to put us in the realm where when we get down the stretch, it, it, there's Burkholz that. Um, you got to go face I, those teams over in here, the here's, My biggest concern was not about the Metro Suburban. My biggest concern when we looked at it was that the talk about doing away with districts. And it's not for my sake, it's for high school football players' sakes. Right. Because if they do go down that road, they've already gone away with when your district, you're automatically going to be there. They want this RPI ranking to be how you get in. Right. So that's going to make the good coaches schedule better teams. It's not about winning all your games anymore. It's about playing the best schedule you can and win games to get into the playoffs to win it. 
That schedule, Coach, is not easy. Lake Brantley, Lake Mineola, Merritt Island, Satellite, Orange Park. Uh, I got you undefeated going to Coco. That's where I got you. I hope so. Um, I'm done. I went in there tough, and I did it on purpose at the beginning of the season before we got into district. When we got to Lake Gibson last year and I looked at what happened and what went down, I don't think as soon as that touchdown happened in the second quarter right before halftime and got us into the mindset that the kids were in at halftime, we couldn't get them out of it coming out of the second half. That told me that I have to do something with the schedule at the beginning of the season this year to make it tougher so that when we get to the end of the season, we've already faced teams that are going to make us work like that. So we've got to get through those now, make that happen, and understand what's up. We're going to get into the playoffs and go deeper. We've got to know what we're looking at. Harmony, Palm Bay, Heritage, Vieira, O'Galley, not an easy schedule by any stretch of the imagination. And, Coach, really I just think, for me to you to say with the assumption of health because that's always the key i think this football team has a very and i know coach coach speak is going to say we're going to take it one game at a time we're going to do this but that's not how we or all of these people watching the stream are going to look at this what i'm going to say is that i think that this football team has an outstanding chance coach to do exactly what they did last year, and I believe they have a chance to even take it a step further. What say you to that? That is my goal. Okay. Uh, loading up and getting with Coach Snyder for week five and, and all that stuff, it, it was all based on let's challenge the kids early and get them prepared. It is one game at a time. But if we can face that one game at a time and have games to rebound in and have better competition, we're going to go through and make this happen. I don't see a game. I see that we could win every game. Now everybody's going to think I'm crazy when I say that and I look at that. But then again, when I was at the University of Miami and everywhere I've ever been, I've never gone into a game that I didn't think we could win. Right. There's a way that it can be done, whether they've got better talent or not. You can win every game. I was on the 83 team that beat Nebraska. They were way more athletic than us, and we beat them. So it can be done if the game plan is right, the effort is right, and everybody's on mark, you can win. What can you tell the kids about, the student-athletes, about – I, what advice do you give them? Because you know what it's like to win a national championship, okay? What do you tell them about? Because speaking from that experience means a lot to student athletes. What can you? What do you tell them about that experience? Sometimes it's hard to get them to understand. It's about the moment, right? It's not what I did yesterday. It's not what I think I'm going to do in two weeks. It's about the moment. When you're at practice, did you execute perfectly? Did you get it all done? Do you know your game plan? Do you know what you're doing that week every single down, every single minute when you're on the field and when you're going? It's about the moment. That moment that you shine or don't is the moment that matters. In a game, you can't let it bother you. If you don't, you step up and shine the next one. What is it, what, what, as you look at your football team, um, what do you like best about it right now coming out of the, the off-season workouts? What impressed you the most about this team heading into camp? Uh, the kids are coming together a little bit better. I mean, we lost some of our senior leaders that were out there and everything, and I'm looking at what's happening. They're starting to mesh a little bit better. They're coming together. We have a good group of young kids coming in that mold very well with the, with the upperclassmen, and we're getting everything to mix together. And I think what's going to come out into this is when we get rolling, the attitude of these new seniors. You know, you've got Cody. You've got Hunter. Uh, you've got Markwell on the defensive line. Uh, you've got uh, Boudreaux Benford. You've got the guys that have been there for a while. We've got things that are going on. I've also got a little bit younger guys on that line in there. James Hines is always full of energy on the offensive line. You've got Key Cohen in the safety in the backfield. I've got uh, Kendrick Wright who's back there and always helping with the defenses in the back. And as we roll that around and we start looking offensively, we still have Jalen Clark. That can't, he can't. Nothing can be said about He's a huge X factor. Not only is he a huge X factor, he's a two-way starter from last year. He's still phenomenal this year. He's going to be the guy that's going to make it happen for us there. And we're rotating people through. We have a transfer that came in that's going to be a running back with us, and we have a couple other guys we're working on running back too. Um, Arizona, right? Yeah, they moved moved to the area from Arizona. Um, Um, Go ahead, I'm sorry. It's Wesley Lampert. He's a a great character, great kid. Um, What is his team as it sits right now? Because the, the question you can't ask in high school football is, what's it missing? <laughs> not, it's not, not in the state of Florida. Oh, I'm missing <laughs> what Snyder's got. <laughs> I, I, I so, mean, that's uh, – so, yeah. so, so what, what, what is the next – what is it going to take to get them over that to, – to, to, to win that regional championship? 
Execution. Okay. Execution. I believe you can do it. Bottom line, this year I think we have the kids and the talent. They execute and get it done and go the next step and go further down. And I think with the younger generation coming in, the community getting stronger and coming in with us, we've actually got a great opportunity of execution, learning it, going through, and building from year to year. And the kids coming in that are going to just fill in are going to step us another. If we don't make it to the state championship this year, I think we can do it the next. Let me ask you this. Uh, two more for you here. What did you learn? Uh, I, I know you often talk about the Jimmy Johnsons and the Howard Schnellenbergers of the world. What did you take from Schnellenberger? <sighs> Coach Schnellenberger is the man that scared you when you walked into the room. That deep voice, the pipe, and everything else. And then when you started to actually execute and realize where he came from and his resume and what football came from, learning the game and everything else was just brilliant. He, he, you know, Coach Coach Nellenberger, uh, Coach uh, Oliver Dottie actually recruited me out of high school. I get there and meet Coach Nellenberger, and it's like, wow, wow factor. And um, But then as you go through, you expect to get chewed out or something like that. And one time in practice, my freshman year, I kind of loafed on a play, and I'm, he calls me over. I'm expecting to get chewed out, and he just puts his arm around my shoulder and said, uh, I thought you wanted to be the best player out here. You don't do that by – jogging a route no and no. That, that sunk in with me as a freshman in college right off the get-go it was like I, I mean wow and then from then on I busted my butt what'd you take from Jimmy Johnson Jimmy is a player's coach Jimmy has his favorites does what he does but Jimmy is always honest with you and up front you give him everything you got and you execute and he's going to go with you um, a story I always tell that I think is phenomenal and to tell you what kind of character Jimmy had as a coach for me uh, in the Penn State game when we lost my senior year, uh, I asked him at halftime if we could switch punt returns. I was a punt returner. Is that the game that you guys got off the bus we, in the fatigues? We were the yeah, off the plane. The plane there, right. By the way, there were only eight out of 90 guys in fatigue. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that whole deal came down to we were trying to block the punt the whole game. I got you. And uh, I asked him at halftime if he'd switch to a sideline return. Everybody knew it, and they're crowding the middle of the field everything else he actually said no we're going to block it we're going to block it we finished the game it's over a few months later he comes to brevard county for uh alumni a fundraising thing and he's at my parents house because my mom was still involved with the um alumni Mm -hmm. stuff and he calls me into the kitchen at my mom's house and now i'm already graduated and gone and he calls me in and i looked at him and said yeah coach what's up and he looked me dead in the eye and he said i'm sorry i said for what he's like you were right we should have gone to a sideline return at halftime and that was months after Jimmy the game Johnson. was over. And he just looked at it. And to hear, have him say that to me and wow. look at that is he is that he's a player's coach. He listens. He watches what's going on. And that's why he was so successful and so phenomenal at what he does. How crucial will it be for the University of Miami's success to continue to recruit the state of Florida as they have done recently? Every school in the country needs to recruit the state of Florida. Well, I mean, there's Florida I, I, right now. I hear you on that, but Florida State, Florida, Miami, those three schools' success in when, when you guys were winning national champions came as a result of strictly recruiting this state. Here's the problem we have now. All right. UCF is good. Mm-hmm. South Florida is good. Mm-hmm. So now if you just want to take that and leave FIU and FAU out of the mix, but you don't have to, you could have your own conference in Florida. Right. Yeah. Technically, you could keep all the kids in Florida right. and have one of the best con- – it, it could compete with the Southeast Conference. Yeah, but, but, but what does that say for how – and I don't mean anything against, uh, you know, uh, USF or F- FAU, but what does that say for how far the Florida, uh, uh, FSU, and Miami have come back to the pack? They have, and they're there, but it all comes down to the recruiting. Right. A lot of it right now has got to do with the new monies. Right. Things in college. Yeah, that's true. And I, I'm not going to have an opinion one way or the other on that because I played with a bunch of guys that have been arguing for 35 years, the players. I mean, we made the University of Miami a ton of money back in the day and didn't see anything for it. Well, I got so, to, you guys may have your hands full here in a couple of years because 12 states right now currently allow NIL for high school football. Florida's not far behind. Coach, final thing. Yes, sir. Looking at that camera, tell everybody what they can expect from the 2022 Melbourne Bulldogs. 2022 Melbourne Bulldogs. You're going to get a good work ethic. They're going to come out, and they're going to give you the show every week and give you everything they got. They're going to show up. They're going to perform offensively, defensively. They're going to try to best last year. Well, I can tell you what. You certainly have the talent and the coaching to get it done. 
All that's left now is to prepare for what's going to be an exciting, exciting upcoming 2022 Melbourne Bulldog season. For David Kintai, I'm Alice Larzinski. We'll be back with another guest here in one hey, moment. by the way, thank you for everything you guys are doing. Oh, no. Brevard County Sports and everything else. We love it, really man. really appreciate that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Jamal. Yeah. I'll catch up with you uh, first practice. Yep. All right, welcome back here to Walk-Ons in beautiful downtown Vieira. Alan Slaughterzinski with you. I want to thank Corey Broomfield and David Kintai. And we are right in the middle here. And I tell you what, um, it's hard to believe, but it's been six years already for this head coach and his program. He's done a heck of a job up there at Astronaut. And uh, please help me welcome uh, Mr. Justin Wharton, coach, how you doing, man? Good. Appreciate you guys having us back in this year, man. Yeah, always, man. Fun. Always, always going to have you on, coach. Uh, you look at this. Uh, you look at it here. It's Mark Ainsley. It's uh, Wayne Younger. Then you. What's it like to be the guy with the third longest tenure in the county? It, it's funny because just growing up here, playing in this county, you know, you look at there, there's a lot of very esteemed coaches, and there are a lot of guys that coach for a lot of years. You had Dan Burke at Palm Bay for a long time, Randy obviously at Astronaut. You know, you had Chuck Wood and Pat Lusk at Rockledge. Like there, there's a longevity thing that went on for a long time in the county. So to be at that top end of it's kind of surreal almost, you know. Like I don't feel like I'm old enough to be <laughs> – head coach for longer than most people in the county i suppose well and a lot of people don't know but you did a heck of a job over at nature coast as well and what you did there and i think what you were just saying is you've been coaching almost 20 not even have almost half your life yeah yeah so i'm not 40 yet so i'm getting to where i'll be coaching more than i've been doing anything else so that's uh, that is a love and a passion coach i gotta start off with uh with the realignment and ask you your thoughts on the new metro suburb and the district realignment that puts you in there with Palm Bay, Cocoa, Space Coast, and Titusville. Talk about your feelings on that. I think the first thing, just being in a district is good. Uh, I think it's big because at the end of the day, one team wins the state championship. So, you know, if you win every game but one, what, what do you hang your hat on? So I think being able to have that district championship and it's something tangible that you can put in the front office, the coach office, wherever, I think that's always a good thing to have. And the lower classes have been missing that for a while. But as far as the split, you know, it's one of those things, selfishly, I think it benefits some of us in the county. I think being being smaller, you know, smaller schools, especially the way the split work, because, you know, the Miami schools, they're, they're good. There's a lot of good football down there. So having your, your metro areas taken out, you know, again, selfishly, it's like, all right, well, those are a lot of the guys you got to beat when you get to the nitty-gritty. But then – you know, when you look back at it, too, like, it's just, it's something else that doesn't necessarily address everything that could be addressed. Correct. You know? Correct. I agree with you on so that. So it's kind of like we're beating around the bush a little bit. It's something that could be good. I know there's a lot of people upset with it. Like, I spent time in Orlando, and I talked with uh, Coach Williams at Jones, and I know there are a lot of guys over there that weren't fans of it, and I understand why. So, you know, it's one of those things. I, I think it's hard to it's hard to say what it is until you see at you the end of the it. year, you know. But uh, the biggest thing to me is just, hopefully having some longevity with the, the classifications, the districts, the schedules, because it would be nice to have at least that two years where we don't got to touch the schedules, you don't got to worry about a lot of that stuff because it just makes for a busy off season. you know, what are we, three, four years in a row yeah. of rescheduling and, and trying to find people to play. And, 
And God forbid you do really well this year and you're not, you know, you don't got a lot back next year because then you got to pick and choose who to play, but you got less to pick from kind of thing. And people don't understand your program is going up against Coco two times in the playoffs, have they not? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, people, you know, I mean, look, these kids line up in this county. They want to they wanna play. That's the way it goes, man. They want to line up and play. Tell us about your team this year, Coach. I know you told me prior to you're young this year. Let's start offensively. Uh, let's start up front. I know you're a guy that, man, you, you love that tough yeah, grind yeah. them in the, in the trenches. Uh, tell me about your football team this year. We're going to be real young up front. Uh, we're going to have one senior. Uh, one of our four seniors is going to be there, Vodger Washington, and, and he's been a guy that's played offense line for us since he walked through the door. He does a good job. Uh, he's physical. He's he's one of those guys that's all in. When he when he's there, the effort he has, you can't question it. You know what I'm saying? He, right. he works his butt off. So I think having him as a leader with that group is going to be big, not just for the group but for him. You know, I think – Sometimes having that leadership role lets kids grow. So I think it will help him there, and I think it will really help having the rest of them where now we got a couple of years of them. So we're investing our time in that offensive line, and then next year it will pay dividends on top of what it pays this fall. So we're, we're just kind of looking at it from that standpoint and, and trying to just grow the football program. You know, sometimes you get a year like we had this year, three and six, and all you can do is circle the wagons and, and really kind of build with what you got. Um, and I think that group's really going to be a key for us. I think we got the size there, but again, when you're young, you just sometimes you got to put their feet in the fire and see how they go. You lost one of my favorite athletes in this county at quarterback. He graduated. I, I, I just love the way he played both uh, basketball and football. Uh, what does your backfield look like? Our backfield's going to be, uh, I mean, if you got any of the spring game, it'll be a lot of the spring. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple young kids that we think might end up staying up with us and, and helping out there, too. So um, we, we got pretty good depth with the young incoming freshmen and really pretty good size. I, I think on the hoof, they'll be every bit as big size-wise as the varsity group. So having those young guys come in and fill in will be good. But uh, we got Hunter's arm back, who led us in rushing in the spring. Nigel uh, Barkin's back. And he scored our touchdown in the spring right. to kind of break that stalemate. So we, we got some guys and, and different skill sets, which would be nice. When you're retooling and re, you know, and, and molding and grooming a younger uh, generation of football players to move up through the varsity ranks, is it defensively where you make your football team most felt? Is that where you make the biggest impact? That's kind of been where we're leaning this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I've really been after our, our defense corner is our baseball coach. So, you know, that second half of the year, yeah. you got to really bend his ear because he's in baseball mode. They had a heck of a year this year. Yeah, he did. Um, but, you know, I've been telling him since January, I really think for us to, to improve on last year, yeah, we got to get better on offense. You got to score points to win. But I, I think we have pieces, and I thought we showed it a little bit in spring where if we can get guys to just calm down and do their job, don't worry about the guy next to you, trust the guy next to you, do your job, we have the pieces where we can be pretty salty on defense. So we're just trying to build that up. You know, we, we felt like we had to shuffle so much last year. We, we had a couple different COVID things with, with coaches or players and just yeah. missing by, you know. We, we Didn't really, you lose a game too? Like, yeah, we lost the yeah. game. We lost. We lost two games actually. Yeah. We lost our kickoff classic. Right. We lost That's a, right. a game early in the year that we moved because it was a county game. So, yeah, that was that's brutal to deal with. But you know, it's one of those things. To me, you always get shuffling, especially on defense. And then probably week three or four, you really get salty and settle in. And this is our group. These are our guys. And when you lose your kickoff classic, your week two game it really throws a wrench into that, you know. So we, we just never felt like you until can't those get going. last couple of weeks, we never had guys where they're comfortable and that's, you know, that's home. You got that one home, good job, coach, kind of thing. So hopefully this year we got all our games and being able to shuffle early and, and get those guys in the right spots, that'll be. Tell us about your coaching staff. Uh, we, we, got a, we got a pretty good coaching staff. We got a lot of continuity, a lot of guys that have been around the program. Uh, J.J. Edwards, our defense coordinator, he's been with the program. He did a terrific job with that baseball team. He did, didn't he? Uh, he really he did. did. He had me fired up, too, because we sat down. He's like, what do you think scheduling-wise? And, like, I, I got to be kind of just listening right. to it from the, the ground up. I and loved watching his team play. Yeah, yeah. They and were it, scrappy. They were young. Um, they executed. They were a good team. Yeah, and, and I think he's the same thing as me. He's a real big believer, and you do those little things, and you stack one little thing on top of the next until you get that finished product. And I, I think they really bought into that. Uh, they're an unselfish group, and I think any time you get a sport, you got to have that. And then he had a couple guys that were salty on the mound pitching, which yeah. you know, to me that's like having a good defense. I you got a good it. defense on football team, 
you kind of piece stuff together around it and, and, you know, get your get your points here and there and be good still regardless of right. what you got going offensively. You're a guy that uh, a lot of people know just as a coach, right? Like they see you out there. They see you coaching. Tell us about Justin Warden. What, what is the guy off oh, the man. football field like? What do you like to do? How, do you, how does Justin Warden have fun? I, I've gotten real into fishing lately. We, we, uh, we moved a few years back before my second was born, and we got a pond kind of behind the house. And my wife grew up hunting tell and fishing us, yeah, and tell stuff. Tell us about your family, too. Yeah, so, you know, she, she got, why don't we get Maddox, my seven-year-old, into fishing. So we got him into fishing. And then my dad, when he retired from football, he got real into bass fishing. He's he's really got a knack for finding fish, man. So he got me into fish for bass. And then Coach Edwards and his dad have been fishing Brevard County for longer than 80% <laughs> of the county's been alive, you know. So it, it's just one of those things, you know, it's a Titusville thing for sure. But, I mean, there's good fishing all up and down the county. and. It, it's one of those things, being being home is good, but being on this side of the state, too, there's just so much of that stuff that you can do. Get outside and, and just kind of, you know, enjoy yourself. Well, the cards really fell right for you when the job came open at Astronaut, being an alum there. And, and you know, he, I mean, you put together a heck of a program there at uh, Nature Coast. Astronaut is one of those schools, Coach, where, you know what? You guys do a lot of great things up there. Tell us about that community. Yeah, it's one of those, like, throwback communities to me. You know, everybody is kind of that roll your sleeves up and just work. Like, you don't get a whole lot of people complaining about having to work. Like, you might get the, oh, it's hot out, or like, oh, this is heavy. But, you know, people just do what they're supposed to do and get the job done kind right. of thing. And that's, you know, growing up with that, and that's how my dad always was, you know, like, Oh, I'm tired. Like, I'm thirsty. We'd be outside playing basketball. Like, you know, swallow your spit. You know, the old right. dad. Oh, I know. You know but it, it's it's very much indicative of the north end of this county. You know, you got a lot of people that, that work hard. And, you know, there's a lot of hard jobs up there, too. There's a lot of outside stuff people do. So, I, I think that the community mends well with the DNA of the school. And then, uh, you know, you got to give credit to Coach Donnelly, Coach Halleck, Coach Shields, uh, all, all the guys that have been there because they realize that. And astronauts always been that we're going to line up, play defense, and try and smash you on the offense side of the ball. And, you know, to me, that's hard work. you got to get in the weight room and get after it all off season. Coach, I, I apologize if this has happened or I don't know about it. Are there any plans to do anything, like, to honor Coach Halleck prior to a game have we got to that yet or because i know we named our special teams award after right. him um is there anything going on with that well i know uh so his his son is still in the area he works uh out in the cape and then his daughter-in-law teaches at the school um and, and she was doing the avid program she does a great job the kids love her um they got uh, a scholarship they give out in his name nice. every year. Very nice. They try to give it to a student athlete because he's a student right. athlete. So that's been really big. Um, I know he meant a lot to you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did. We had a decal on the helmets last year for yeah. him, which, you know, it's a little thing. but It matters. Yeah. He would have loved it. He yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. would have loved absolutely. it. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things that's growing too. You know, you got a guy that put twenty years of his life into the program, and he really—I mean, he really put twenty years of his life into this program. Like it, it's his fingerprints literally. on everything. I yeah. mean, literally, he did. So, it was his love. Yeah. So I think it's it's something that'll grow as as we go. We'll find more and more ways to honor him. Um, we, we got we got some things that me and Edwards, because Coach Edwards coached with him for a long time, and, and Coach Bundy, the offense line coach, some of the things that. He did pregame stuff, just stuff that, like, people outside of the program wouldn't he, even know that we're trying to get loot back in. You know, just the little things, you know. <laughs> He's still the greatest guest ever on a coaching show, <laughs> ever. And I tell this story every year, and I'm going to tell it again. When I was with Space Coast Daily, we used to do these at Beefo Brady's, and Randy Halleck was on the show, and it was me, Steve Wilson, and Orville Susong, and they got to talking about Coco. <laughs> and they got to talking, and I won't mention the player, but Randy Halleck cut loose. All you had to say was, Coach, you play the Tigers. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and he went off on losing a couple of players to Coco, and he didn't hold anything back. And I'm sitting at the end of the table because Orville Susong was running this particular interview, and I just thought, oh, wow. And then the next thing I know, after that segment had ended, John Wilkinson said to Tex and said, I'm coming next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I like. Even going all the way back, like I played baseball like like 
fourth grade, fifth grade with Bucky, and Coach Shields is still here. So Brian Shields and, and Randy and uh-huh. Bill Shields and my dad coached that team. And, I mean, you just talk about three fiery individuals, and they're very different individuals too. Which and is all the way back, man. But I'll tell you what, when that when the clock's on and they're on the same sideline, that's, that's a group right there. Mm-hmm. There is no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, a great story tradition at uh, Astronaut High School. Coach, uh, what are your expectations for them? I'm not going to ask you to tell me wins, losses. What would you like to see from this team this year? Oh, we just want to show improvement. You know, we're so we're so young. It'll be really interesting to see because I've always been a big believer, and you look like a million bucks, and that's great. But when you put the shoulder pads and helmet on, you really show us: are you a million bucks, or do you look like something? And, and there's well, lots do I of need to get changed yeah, for you, right? Yeah, you know, like you, you can look a certain way. It doesn't necessarily mean you're a football player, and I think that gets lost sometimes, but. We're just excited to put the pads on and, and see what we got because we're going to be very young. Um, I think it's something, again, that will pay huge dividends a year, two years down the road. But you know, we, This is the process, yeah, though, right? And, and I think it's kind of like your article said. We're 5-5, five and 6-4. Five, and four. As the coach staff, we're talking like that's that's the kind of improvement we're looking for. Um, I think we got some games where we're kind of playing with house money. You right. Know, if, if you lose certain games. Good learning experience. We're getting better. We show that we're good. But if you steal those games, you're putting yourself ahead of schedule. So. You know, we're, we're, we're just aiming to be salty, man. We want to be that team when, you, when you're done with us on Friday night, you're like, those guys right there came to play. Like, uh, win, loss, draw, whatever, like, they're, they're scrappers. Coach, I, I, you're one of my favorite. I don't get a chance. I just don't get a chance to talk to you nearly enough. And you're one of my favorite guys to talk to. I love your passion for what you do. Um, I know those kids love you up there. The, the, the astronaut community is extremely lucky to have you. Uh, is there anything – uh, we need to know about, uh, you know, what what it is you guys are doing there. Is there anything you want to let us know that maybe we haven't discussed here? I mean, we're just – Prepare for the retool. Yeah, yeah, we're just trying to trying to get it back to where it's been. And I was lucky enough to kind of step into the program as a football player. At the time, it was really at, at its peak, its latest peak per se. And then as a young coach, being around a couple of those teams that were very, very talented and fell short. So getting to see a team that played for it all as well as a team that probably could have and didn't, you know, I think that gives good balance as far as expectations and stuff. So we're, we're just trying to temper that. And, and like I said, we're just trying to build tough young men. Like we want guys that when they go out in that community, once they're done being football players, you know, they're, they're good people. You know, they're, they're good workers. They're the people you want to hang around with at lunch. Like, if we can do that, I think it translates. Like, football to me has always been the greatest game because everything on the football field translates so well outside of football. Yep. I feel like with the hire of John Holmes at Titusville that the north end of the county is finally locked down. In other words, you know what? You got good control on your program. Now they get a guy in Holmes at Titusville. We can get back to that rivalry again, you know, and start to build that the entire community feel for what it was. Absolutely. And that's why I think a lot of people don't realize there's one point that actually that Titus was one of the best high school football rivalries there was. I, and I, and it's, it's been up and down, obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, you're talking about two programs that have played for it all at some point, And it's been a while, obviously. But two programs that also aspire to get back to that level. So, you know, especially when you're in one community, as tight-knit as the community is, it definitely makes for some fun. You know, I, it's like Coach Gadipe, uh who, who did our linebackers last year. He He's coached at for a long time, and he loves to tell the kids, like, hey, listen, I want to beat Titusville because for the next 365 days when I go to Walmart, I got my astronaut stuff on, and no one can say anything That's to me. Right. They just got to watch me smile and walk up and down the aisles. I don't even buy anything. I just want to see the city champ shirt. And, you know, so that's – and I think Holmes will bring that because he played in the barbecue right. bowl. He, he gets that rivalry feel, and, and there's no doubt the kids get it on both sides. Right. You know, so – I think getting it back to that kind of rivalry where there's that, that ribbon in Walmart, you know, you go to church on Sunday and before the pastor starts gotcha. talking, you get those right, elbows, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's just it's good fun, man. It's good for the sport. It's good for the community. You look at uh, – we used to do a thing uh, called uh, Throwback Thursdays, and the last Throwback Thursday thing we did on Brevard Sports Network was the 1983 district championship game between Astronaut and Titusville. When you played in the same stadium, uh, it was – the, you, there was no better atmosphere in Brevard Yeah, listen, Dre, Dre Field was one of the single coolest places in Florida for a long time to me because you always had that community that didn't come to the game, but they were on that fence at the game. Right. So you'd have ten times what the actual capacity of the stadium was. 
Um, I, I just remember growing up, playoff games there was just unreal. Yeah. If you're not from here and you walk in and there's standing room only around the outside of the stadium, right. it, it's it's an intimidating thing. Yeah. And that's not to say we're not thankful for our stadium. And I'm sure Titus will right, thankful right. for theirs, but there's there's that little bit that so just it's you a, miss you're, it. You're talking about uh, Fenway and Wrigley compared to New Yankee Stadium. Exactly. Right, exactly. right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. New Yankee Stadium's awesome. It's got the bells and whistles. Right. But you can't beat a game in no, Fenway. No, you, can, you can't do it. Coach. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate Good luck you to you. Thank you. We'll be up in a couple of weeks when you kick off camp and talk to some of the kids. This guy right here, he is also one of the best in this county. We're very blessed to have guys like Justin Warden in this county Thank who you. are building programs, retooling programs, and stay with those programs. I cannot tell you how valuable that is for our student athletes. Uh, for Coach Warden, I'm Alan. We'll be back with the next coach. Who? It'll be Coach Ryan Schneider of the Coco Tiger. And one. Welcome back to Walk-Ons. And our next head coach, uh, yeah, I tell you, going into his fifth season, all he did last year was finish 11-2. He was the 4A state runner-up for the second time in four seasons uh, with the Coco Tigers. Please help me welcome head coach of the Coco Tigers, Mr. Ryan Schneider. Coach, good to see you. How you doing, good man? Good seeing you, sir. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Um, all right, coach. Off-season workouts. How how do you feel coming into camp? Um, we're going to be pretty good. You know, it's been a great off season. Our kids are working hard. We have a, a, a group of coaches who are dedicated being there every day. Um, we're averaging over 50, 60 kids a day, over 10 coaches there every day. And uh, we're excited, man. We feel like we have a pretty good team. You know, we're working every day to build our championship habits. We're working every day to get better. Um, you know, just a story. You know, about one of our workouts, uh, so the, 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 the one day we had a bad workout, right, that we didn't reach our potential, is we have this hill next to the school that we run up and down. We call it Tiger Hill, Championship yeah. Hill. We run no, up well. and down the damn hill. And it sucks. I tried to do it one time. I had to stop like three times. It was, it was <laughs> terrible. So we did it, and uh, we might have been doing like 12 that day. And uh, it was early on, early on in the summer. And we're going up and down the hill. And it was, of course, a million degrees outside. And yeah. You just cut the grass, so you get the heat coming off the grass. Mm -hmm. and it was disgusting out there. And the kids started bickering. You know, it's nothing crazy, nothing like fighting, but it's bickering. You know, don't tell me what to do blah, 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 with each other, with right, each other, right. right? So we run the hills, and I'll give the kids credit. They gave great effort. They finished it. They did a great job. But we pulled them together at the end. They were like, guys, this was, a, this was not a championship day. You know, when we faced adversity, we started bickering. We started complaining to each other. We started pointing some fingers. You know, we can't do that. We have to come together as a team. We're going to face moments where, you know, bad things happen in games. We have to come together as a team. And they've done a great job of doing that since then. And, um, you know, I, I, I truly feel like there's something special brewing right now in uh, Tiger Land. I tell you, Coach, um, you know, just looking at some of your top players, Hawkins, uh, Kion Calhoun, Jordan Holmes, some Andre Hawkins, players like that. Then you go and you get a player that uh, – uh, the, the, and, and, look, I, you're an offensive guy. You were a quarterback at UCF. Uh, Blake Boda is impressive, Coach. I, you know, I had an opportunity to talk to him, watch his film. Uh, I just think the young man is simply awesome. What, what a shot in the arm to get Blake Boda. Yeah, we looked out there. Yeah. You know, he's a great kid. Um, you know, he impresses me, his work ethic and the way he communicates and the way he does things. He's extremely smart. As you know, I think it's a 4.2 GPA, and he's pretty much he's graduated. He's already graduated, yeah. Yep. Um, and, you know, he, he, he wants to be great, and he expects to be great. You know, so, you know, we're excited to have him. There's a, a, a lot of different things we'll do with him. Um, and, and, you know, he has a special group of athletes around him that he doesn't have to do everything that he can. He understands. Get the ball to our guys and let the guys do what they do. 
When I asked him why Coco, his response was, because I need to play tougher competition. I need to step on a football field and know what I can do against the St. Thomases of the world. That's what he told me. Mm -hmm. You know, same reason Dad would come with you. They want to go out and play these teams, Coach, that they wouldn't otherwise get a chance to play, maybe pick up the offers uh, that, that they wouldn't get elsewhere. I, I, I just – it's – this schedule, it's on the screen. You hold nothing back with yeah. this schedule. Tell me how you put this thing together. You know, when you're at Coco – you, you, you want to play the best. You, right. know, you want to, you know, we pride ourselves on being one of those teams in the state of Florida that doesn't care that we, we expect every year to be great, and, and we're gonna we're gonna challenge ourselves. You know, we want to, you know, no one wants to play the teams that you know you're gonna win. We want to play the teams that you're walking into a crazy atmosphere. You know, it's almost like a college experience, and we're playing, you know, the big boys. We're, we are a big boy, but you know, it's it's two of the monsters in the state, button heads. That's right. what we want to do. And you know, I mean, to me, I was talking to uh, Larry about this. Uh, to me, I think you guys, I, I cannot wait to see that matchup against St. Thomas. I, I think that's gonna. And what's it gonna be like to step on the field, look across the field, coach against Roger Harris? So, so, you know. For you guys don't know, I, Roger Harris probably my best friend. Yeah. You know, I've known him, hell, 10 years, and I talk to him every other day. I literally talked to him yesterday. Uh, it's going to be, you know, an awesome game. It's two teams that play the game the right way and pride themselves on playing the game the right way, and, and it's going to be a lot of Division One kids running around. Now, it, it's funny because I want to tell the story of, you know, how that game happened. Yeah, let's hear it. So, you know, the whole Metro Suburban thing happened. Yep. You know, and we're Suburban. And, you know, you, you look at talk on Twitter and social media crap, and you, you hear people talking about how the suburban schools are, are the JV programs and, the, and, and you know, it's, it's, there's no good teams in suburban and all that crap. And we're Coco. You know, I, I read that. It, it actually pissed me off. Right. I mean, there's, no, there's, nothing, there's nothing soft about Coco. Right. No. So, so literally, I called Raj then. I'm like, hey, bud, like, you know, there's a situation. What week do you have open? And he was like, uh, week three. I'm like, all right, let's do it. He goes, like, yep, let's go. And, you know, I, I love him for that. I love him that he's, you know, he, he, he felt he was actually pissed off. People were thinking that about us, you know. So, you know, it, it's, it's, he's a great dude, man. He does. You want a state championship with him there? Yo, uh, I think we won three Three together. of them, yeah. yeah. Three of no, them. I mean, Rog is a great coach. Uh, I, re I mean, I remember one specifically. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Rog is a great coach. He's a, a, a great man. He does. He, he's a high school coach for the right reason where he's trying to help kids uh, be the best that they can be. And, um. You know, it's going, to be, it's going to be a great game. We're looking forward to it. Coach, but, you know, there's a lot of games we're looking forward to. Coach, I need you to answer the critics that say that, um, you know, I, I mean, the, the, the elephant in the room is the transfers. But people want to come to play at Coco yeah. because you're playing teams like St. Thomas. It, it, listen, what do you say listen, to those critics? And, and you know, I'm, I've been debating whether I want to get pissed off or say things that might get me in trouble. It's not our fault that we run a good program that kids want to be a part of. You know, and we're a public school. The kids show up, we have to take them. So what do you want us to do? Like, like if you're at a different school and Blake Boda shows up at your school, you're going to say no? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know, Day-Day no. Farmer shows up at the school. You're going to say no? No. Right. It's not our fault. You know, we, we, like I told you, we, we have over 10 coaches at every workout. You know, we, we, you, know you come to Coco, you're, you're, you're going to be held to a standard. You're, we're going to compete for state championships, and you're going to go to college. You know, and that's one thing we talk about as a, as a, as a family, as a group at Coco, is we try to break the perception that people have of football players. You watch movies or you watch TV shows, right? And every football player, movies and TV shows, are bullies. They're, you know, they're stupid. Right. You know, they, they don't do things. They're, they're, you know, they, they're, they're, you know, we try to break that perception. You know, last year we had 30 of our 50 in, on a varsity staff or in a varsity roster over 3.0. This yes. year we'll have more. Jaden Edgecombe, is, who's going to be a start receiver for us, is going to be the Vogatorium. You know, like, like we're trying to break that. Our team isn't bullies and thugs and, 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 and stupid kids. Our team is full of passionate young men who want to be great, yep. who are going to be fu future businessmen, future, future you know, uh, lawyers, future doctors, future you know, politicians. You know, that's what we're full of. And future leaders, and that, that's what we take pride Jay in. Jay so was at Yale the other day. I'm not done yet. I'm sorry. So, Go ahead. So, I'm sorry. So when, you know, people, they come to Coco, they know that's the standard they're going to be held at. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, that's what we take pride in. And, and, and because we have great coaches and a, a great faculty, a great administration, we're, and with great players and with great alumni and great support, we're able to win some games, you know, and send kids to college. But, but the biggest thing for us is make sure you're taking care of your academics and that, and that you are 
a quality person, and you leave here ready to, to challenge this world and be the best human being you can be. Well said, Coach. Each of the last two years, 11, 12 kids you have put up on that stage for signing day. I just said Jaden Edgecombe just visited Yale yeah. the other day. I mean, MIT's talking about taking them. Yeah. MIT. MIT, right. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, so that answers that question. Yeah, you don't turn Blake Bodo away. No. <laughs> hey, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong now. I, I, I do hear people complaining. I hear, but we're not breaking rules. No. We are following. It's not, you know, it's the rules of the state of Florida. Like Blake Bodo lives in Daytona. He drives an hour and 15 minutes every day because he wants to be a part of our program. Yeah. I mean, you got to – and and the same thing that DJ Arroyo yes. did, you know. Yes. I, I mean, you cannot. It's the rules. The the, the the days of you know when I was in high school, you had to live in the zone and have an address. It's not that anymore. No, it's, it's not. Anymore. It's not that old school mentality. And today, the program collectively as a whole. And I want to say this: why we're here, because I wanted to wait for Coach Snyder. Congratulations to Brian Warte. Uh, Mark Karstens in the Coco administration with an outstanding hire for the girls' basketball side of the equation. So congratulations to you, Coach Warte, the JV and uh, JV coach and the assistant varsity coach at Rockledge for the last nine years. And Coach is also a youth minister. I mean, another fantastic character hire. It's another great person coming to join the family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coach, um, I did, you know, you and I have talked. Well, before I get to that, what does zone six mean? What does that mean? <laughs> it's, you know, it's the attitude. Gotcha. It's the attitude. It's the best way to put it without saying something that get me in trouble. Right, I don't want to do that. It's the attitude. Gotcha. And it's the confidence. Gotcha. I'll, I'll uh, I have to ask you off camera. Uh, <laughs> and then you, and you pull another coup, not... And when I say coup, I mean I don't mean anything bad. I just mean you, you, you get a guy like this to come and join the staff, a guy like a Nate Hook. So, I mean, you got the coaches, you got the players. You now, know, go ahead. Nate, who had the best year of Holy Trinity history, I believe, last year. What are they, 9-2? and 10-2. and 10-2. and two. You know, uh, I was shocked when it happened. And I've talked to Coach Hooks multiple times before. And uh, I'm a friend. And literally when it happened, I text him, yay. You, would you be interested in coming over to Coco? And two seconds later, he texts me back and goes, yes, sir, let's do it. And it happened that fast. Yeah. No. And, and, and we lucked out. And uh, Coach Hooks is a, 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 just not a, a great coach but a great human being. And, um, you know, just like I said, it's another awesome human being coming to join the, uh, the Tiger family. I liked your attitude, Coach, about the new Metro Suburb thing. Because, and I'll say this. I said, Coach, now, and you and I were joking one time, I said, well, Coach, now you got to go win a state championship. And you said, you know what, Alan? I will take those trophies every year and gladly put them on my desk. Guys, it's the state of Florida. Right. You win a state championship in the state of Florida, you're a damn good team. Right. You know, like, like don't get it kidding. There's good football throughout the state. You know, the, the Pine Forest team, who's, I think, one of the farthest west schools in the Panhandle, gave Jesuit everything they could handle last year in the yeah. state championship. Like, no, no doubt. There's good football throughout the state. So I don't care what people want to say. Um, now, you know, we have to keep on working and keep on getting better. It's not just showing up to win a state championship. We have to keep coming together as a team and, and make sure that we are getting rid of all selfishness and, and, and being, um, you know, just focused on getting uh, uh, better each day. But we're on a good path right now. Merritt Island in the kickoff classic again. And then uh, home to Jones uh, at St. Thomas. Versus Space Coast against Melbourne, against Seminole, uh, Seminole Melbourne. That's that's a tough stretch there. Uh, Titusville for homecoming against Astronaut. A Palm Band in the Barbecue Bowl is home this year. Um, I like your chances to win a state championship with this roster. I'm just going to go put it out there, and I know your coach. You're going to tell me day by day, but I, I think this team has as good a chance to win a state championship as any I've ever laid my eyes on. We have an excellent team. Yeah, but. As someone who's coached in state championship games and got there, it's it's a lot of things have to come together. Mm -hmm. But you know, we we have a special group right now. Now, do we stay healthy? Does you know Coach Schneider not make stupid calls that cost us a game? You know, do uh do do we stay focused? Do we you know are we gonna cry and whine when maybe you don't touch the ball 
too, too, too many times one game, but you're going to touch it ten times next game. It's just all the things. How that have do to you come guys out. deal with the egos? Because there are egos. No, when I mean, you're, we, we talk about it. Yeah. We, we talk. Hey guys, hey, are you going to be an individual? Are you going to be a team guy? What are you going to do? And, and you know, as a coaching staff, we spent time. We went to South Florida. We went to UCF. We spent time with college coaches this offseason, talking to them. All right, how do you do your receiver rotation? How do you do it? How do you do your running back rotation? How do you rotate? And then I told our guys, like, we are deep. We are literally eight deep at the end receiver, probably four deep at running back. Mm-hmm. And I told our guys, we're, we're, it's going to be like a college. We pride ourselves in, in trying to be a, a, a college that runs a – or I'm sorry, a high school that runs a college program. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I told our guys, you're going to rotate. No one's going to be in the field every play. You're going to rotate. We're going to stay fresh. We're going to go up-tempo. We're going to wear people down. And it's going to be fresh bodies nonstop running at people. You're big, too, this year. Coach, I thought the one thing that happened in the Cardinal Gibbons game last year was I thought they were a little bigger than you were up front. I thought that and at the end of that game, I thought they wore you down a yeah, little we got, bit. Yeah, we got a little banged up up front. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, uh, two old linemen go down. That kind of hurt us. Yeah. You know? and, and then, but this year, Coach, I look at this offensive line, and it's young. It's, it's big. And I love that about this line. And that's funny, too, though. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. We don't have, like, a – you know, one of the terms, uh, bad body. We don't have bad body kids out there. We have, right. we have good, young, you know, uh, Division One looking kids running around, you know. Coach, it's tough to replace a guy like O.J. Ross we've already talked about. What do you have at the running back position? A bunch. I know you got a couple kids back there, but yeah, who, who are we going to see? Do you know? <laughs> no, I, I know, four right? of them. Now, now, a story about O.J., which, which I'm happy you brought that up because I yeah. wanted to kind of figure a way how to put this in this conversation. So I wasn't there for this, but I heard from multiple people. At the end of the year, maybe like January, February, OJ pulled a lot of the kids together and pretty much told them, don't be the group to ruin what we do at Coco. Don't be the group to let everyone else down because you guys aren't focused. And it wasn't like we were doing anything wrong, but he, right, just, he right. just gave a leadership, passionate speech to the kids about what Coco meant to him. And don't be that group to, to tarnish what Coco means the to, legacy. All the, yeah, the legacy to all the ex-players and alumni and community. And that was beautiful. That's what true leadership is. And I love OJ. I will always love OJ. He will be difficult to replace. Yeah. Now, we have a lot of good players. There are some things that they do better than OJ, but there's a lot of things OJ does better than them. Right. And we might do a little different running, st- uh, running style because of what we have. Right. You know, we're probably a little bit bigger, uh, bigger backs than, than, than we've had in the past. Well, I tell you what, I'm excited to watch this football team play this year. I do have to ask you um, – Special teams. How's special teams looking? We're gonna be okay. Yeah, we're gonna be good. That's that's one good thing is you know we're gonna dress fifty mm-hmm. and we have fifty good, really good football players. Well, so I, we're gonna have kids flying around on fresh. You know that we're gonna be fresh, making plays. You look at the coaching staff on this football team, and it is as deep as any in this county, uh, in this state. Uh, it's actually the deepest in the county, and as oh, what I meant to say was in the state. You know, Coach Franco, Coach Diesel, Coach Diesel. You get all. I you you probably draw a lot from each, don't you? I have, we have three head coaches, three former head coaches on the staff. That it's a blessing for me because I'm. You know, I learned from Roger Harry a long time ago. You know, hire, who, hire hire good people, hire smart people. Who was your favorite coach? I mean, for those of you that don't know, this guy was the six A Florida Dairy Farmer Player of the Year. I should have been the. Uh, Der- the Mr. Florida. But, Mr. Florida but quarterback. Anquan Bolden beat me. You know, who, oh, is that? Who the hell is Anquan Bolden? Anquan really? Bolden, really? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Former, yeah. Ba- former yeah. Baltimore Raven, baby. P- Pahokee. What the hell is a Pahokee? <laughs> <laughs> Sugar cane yeah. fields, right? Uh, somebody wants to know. Somebody's asking a question, Coach. Where did O.J. Raw sign? Uh, Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech. All right. Um, who is your favorite coach of all time that, that you played Bobby for? Bobby Bowden. Oh, that I played for? Yeah. I have no idea. Uh, uh, Frank Kepler, my, my old high school head coach. Okay. Was, was, uh, and your favorite coach it? is Bobby Bowden, huh? Well, growing up, I loved Florida State, man. Did you really? They could have been. They could have had Dan Marino and Joe Montana and Jim Kelly as a quarterback. If they would have <laughs> offered me, I was like, yes. But, you know, I, I, uh, I remember going to their uh, camp, and Mark Rick was the quarterback coach off the court there and told me, ah, we like you, coach, but you're too, or we like you, Ryan, but you're too short. I want to I say this. And, I wrote, and then they signed Chris Winkie. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know you don't like this stuff because you're – they are a pretty humble guy, but I, I want to say this, you know, and I say this every year, but every year as we continue to go, you look at the streak that this football team has, uh, 15 straight years of reaching at least the state semifinals. That's, that is a dumb number, and, yeah. and I think people really need to start paying attention. You know, Coach Wilk did an unbelievable job. Like, like 
15 years to make it to the Final Four. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it's it, But, look, Coach, in all honesty, yes, Coach Wilkinson did a terrific job. He's a legend here. But, you know, I wrote, and I want to read exactly what I wrote. Nobody remembers head coaches Ray Perkins, Ray Goff, Gary Moeller, and that's because they all failed after taking over for Bear Bryant, Vince Dooley, and Bo Schembechler. Okay? Nobody remembers those guys. But this guy right here at this level with this football program is more cut from the mold of Les Miles and Jimbo Fisher. Those guys took over for a couple of guys named Saban and Bowden. Coach, you've done a hell of a job. I appreciate it, but it's not me. It's – um. It's all of us. It's on yeah. the, 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 you know, we have a great principal, Miss Stewart, that's going to do a great job, and uh, we're excited. You know, I'm excited for you, Coach. I'll see you first day of camp. I do astronaut. I'll do you, and then uh, we'll see you a lot this year. You know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. ESPN uh, doing the game at St. Uh, Thomas, or are we? I don't know. They're still trying to work it. If Roger knows if it ain't ESPN, it's us, right? Uh, I'll, I'll let him know. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Hey, before we're done, though, I just want to tell my mom I love you and you're going to be okay. What's wrong? She okay? Uh, yeah. All right, all right. Hey, listen, prayers for you. I love your family. You know that. Um, coach, congratulations. Good luck Appreciate this year. Appreciate it. Take you, yeah, yep. Absolutely. Yep. Let me finish. We'll be back with our last uh, head coach, certainly not least. This guy is fantastic. He's done a terrific job. We'll be back with Jake Owens. And one. Well, my next guest, I probably talked to this guy more during the off season than any other head coach in Brevard County. Not about high school football, but about pro football. We're going to ask him about that coming up because this guy went to the Super Bowl last year, and I want to talk to him about that. But he is currently the head coach of the Palm Bay Pirates. He is uh, none other than uh, Jake Owens, tw- over 20 years of coaching here in Brevard. Coach, welcome. Thanks back for having year. me. Always it's a pleasure. Good for you to be back here this year. Coach, last year, when you look at your program last year, and I wrote this, I felt like last year between the way you guys put kids in college, the way you changed the look, the way you uh, corralled the social media and put it out there, the way you played uh, the youth on your football team, uh, you could tell that you had a blueprint for Palm Bay success. T- tell me about this. Well, I mean, you're right. C- you know, coming into a situation uh, like I did last year, you never you, – you, you need to go in with a blueprint. You need to go in with a plan, and, and, um, and that's what we did. I mean, we, we, looked at, we looked at the talent that we had. We looked at and, – and a big part of that talent was – you know our our sophomores and juniors and right. we had a solid senior class yep. but you know uh when you walk into a program like that and you're you're trying to change and really bring back the old tradition it starts it starts with building a program yeah right it, it's not about it's not a one-year thing you know it, coming in and having one great season and you know being unsuccessful the rest of the time that's not what coaching's about no coaching's about building a program building a successful program and that's getting kids into college that's winning football games that's getting these young men to understand what it's what it means to to be a man and to be out in society and carry themselves the right way and build character and all those other things and that's kind of how we approach this whole thing and we're going to benefit from it this year i mean you know last year you know, covering our games, there are games where we had eleven or twelve sophomores starting. Yeah, uh, and and uh, but now those guys, those guys are now they're older, they're more mature, they understand what it takes to win, they understand, you know, some of those games we gave away, and you're they, within a score of Rockledge. Yeah, I mean it was twenty-one nineteen, and uh, about five or six minutes left, and we gave up. We we had we held them and gave up a fourth down play and you know that was pretty much the the story of our season. But that's the learning. That's the learning part. Right. And, and same with satellite last year. It's it's nineteen sixteen something like that. Six or seven minutes left. 
we hold them third down and long. We give up a third, big third down play to them on, on third and long, and, and uh, we lose that momentum. And that was, that was the thing. That was the, kind of the story was teaching these guys how to sustain momentum. And uh, I think this year you're going to see – you're going to see the I love his smile. how we – oh, I'm excited. I'm excited about this football team, Alan. This, this team is we, – we have, we have built it with, with not just real talented kids but great kids, right. great character kids, uh, kids that I just absolutely love being around every day. There's just great young men that are now starting to understand what it takes to win. You know, we lost, we lost to uh, – two games last year by a total of three points mm. you know we we easily and i don't say this lightly but we easily could have been seven three or eight and two last year you know right. we turned the ball over at, at, at critical points of the game and we didn't get off the field on some big third and fourth downs on defense and our guys now i know this group that i have they're not going to blink when that time comes right you know they're not going to blink when they have to go out and make a big stop Make a big play, sustain momentum for us, uh, because talent-wise, we're right there at the top of this county when it comes to talent. No doubt, coach. And you get a player back this year, and I want to ask you, but we get a chance to talk about him last year that it was just lighting the world on fire before now, a, a terrible injury sidelined for for a while. Uh, Daniel Man Man, talk about it, Daniel. Uh, I mean, to have him back, what does that mean? Well, and the, the the paper came out yesterday, and, and uh, they're doing a story a, a about him, and and uh, you know he's obviously one of the big recruits in this right. county, and, and they asked me the same question. And obviously, when you lose when you lose a talented kid like that, it's so hard to reproduce that on the field. You know that the, the talent part, but I will tell you that this young man. What people don't see is his leadership, the right. way he carries himself, the way he, he walks into a room and just lights that room up. We were missing that. We were missing that leadership. And obviously, like I said, I mean, what he does on the field, it speaks for itself. Right, I right. mean, he's, you know, he's, he's a big-time kid, and he's going to go to a big-time school. And uh, so, you, again, like I said, you know, he's, he's 6'6", 190 he runs a 44 i mean that's you know right. he's, he's he's a generational he's a generational type <laughs> he's a, kid a you know freak athlete well yeah i mean I, yeah. you know and, and he's going to be playing both sides of the ball for us and wow but but like i said you know you you lose that that part of it on the field the production on the field but that leadership and those other things that daniel brings that that people don't get to see right is is stuff that you know he Players are drawn to him, right? You know that they, they when he speaks, they listen, and, and that's that's something that is it's even like harder to re, it, it's even harder to reproduce that um, than the than the production on the field. Right. So, you know, it, I am I am just beside myself about having him back, and not only am I excited to have him back on the field, but like I said, I'm excited to just to see him every day at practice and that smile and and that that passion for the game and all those things again that that uh you know we were missing a little bit last year coach uh you get in my opinion one of the more underrated quarterback transfers in the county this year and jade moby i like this kid i'll tell you Alan, he can spin it yes he can he can spin it and and he uh you know we we did a bunch of seven on seven stuff this summer. You know, I, I'm I'm a big seven on seven guy. We went to UCF, we went to USF, we went and played in the state championship tournament again, and he lit it up. And you know that that's a obviously you know you don't got pads on and there's other things involved, but you, you can see the arm talent. You can see the the ability to read a coverage. You can see things that are very important at that position. And uh, he is definitely the real deal. But I'll tell you. You had a quarterback. So t talk about that. I'm going to talk yeah, about that. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. talk about that young yeah. man, too, because, yeah. you know, not only, not only do we get, get Jaden um, to come in and, and play quarterback for us, but our quarterback last year, Zach Emery Foster, he, he is so talented. I mean, yeah. this kid, this kid and, and last year, 
he would get so frustrated with me because he wanted to play defense. He wanted to return kicks. I'm like, you know, you, you're our guy. You're a quarterback. You're, only, you're our only quarterback. You can't but, do that. But, the, you know, this, this, this young man's never played quarterback before, and you know my offense. Right. It's a, it's a college-style offense. Right. You know, we're, we're throwing the ball quite a bit, and we're doing a lot of other things. There's a lot of different reads, and, and he comes in last year as a sophomore and throws for almost 2,000 yards. I know. You know, and, and, and – but what I'm what I'm getting at is is that's what's really exciting is not only getting that piece in Jaden, but now having that piece where we can put Zach. I'll tell you right now, in the three big tournaments that we played this year, the state championship, and that's you know you're playing against the best talent in the state. Right. In those three tournaments, Zach had well over 20 touchdown catches. Unbelievable. I mean, he tore it up. He was almost uncoverable, and and. and you know that's that's just that's so exciting to have to have that piece where we can we can have him return kicks we can have him play receiver he can play inside outside he can play running back right and not only that he can play quarterback yep you know so you have that piece as well and and um it's good to have depth it's good to have depth and, and depth that can put points on the board and and I'll, I'll tell you this i think that is the biggest difference between this year's team and last year's team not just the maturity wise, you know, having having a a, a a junior and senior class that is that has been out, that has battled, that is battle tested, but um, it, it, it's having depth. We have we have incredible depth now on this football team. We we feel like at every position we have guys that can go out and produce and make plays. Right, and having that is just. It's huge. It's huge at the high school level. Coach, I look at your schedule, and the one thing that struck me about your schedule this year was right out of the gate, the south side of this county is going to be decided. Uh, you got, of course, Satellite, and then Bayside and Heritage Weeks well, 1 and 2 in there. Uh, that's, <laughs> so we're going to know, right? I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm and, excited. And you have something, and I want you to talk about the big thing you have coming up, uh, we're going to be down there to broadcast it. I believe it's against Bayside, right? It is, yes. Talk about that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. I mean, uh, you know, obviously, Palm Bay, Palm Bay, uh, people don't know how far back that tradition goes, but Palm Bay was the mecca of high school football in this county. Before Coco was Coco. Oh, yeah. yeah. Before any of those teams right. were anybody. Right. Palm Bay was where everybody wanted to be. It was, it was the – the place, the mecca. It dominated this county. It, it dominated Central Florida. Yeah. Uh, with with, with uh, you know Dan just did an excellent job building that program. So yeah, against Bayside, we're we're bringing all the alumni back. We're celebrating the 2000 2002 state championships. Uh, so we're bringing all those players in. And then uh, what we're really excited about is we are starting a head coaches hall of fame at Palm Bay. Wow! And that's going to be the induction of the first inaugural class, and it's just going to be an incredible night. I'm so glad you guys get to be there for that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm assuming Dan Burke's going in. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to say. Right. But that's funny. possibly a good chance. But, but you look at the schedule and. Coach, I would ask you how you feel about the Metro suburb, but I know you really honestly don't care. I don't. Because, I know. I, I don't. That's why I didn't ask. Yeah. Because um, I look at your schedule, and you are tickled to death to play uh, Coco. Absolutely. You, you are tickled to death to have to play the teams that, that you're going to play. Um, and then outside of conference, all you did was schedule Melbourne, right, another team, Satellite. I mean, Coach. You you stacked it up this year. You're well, feeling I, good. Well, I mean, you know, th- th- this is the thing. It, uh, iron sharpens iron. Right. And, and and we are a football program. We're not going to run from anybody. No. I, I can tell you when we found out, when we found out that we were we were in the district that we were in, uh, I had my – it was in, it, during my seventh period, which is my football class. Right. And we were all in the gym, and uh, it, it came through on my phone, and I just looked at all the guys on the team. I said – we got Coco this year, and they just erupted. Yeah. Everybody went crazy. Yeah, that's good because that. I mean, that's that. That's the type of kids we have. That's the type of kids you want, right? You know that that are excited about a, 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 you know going out there and, and playing good football teams because again, iron sharpens iron, yep. and we're a very good football team. Yes, you are. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a, an exciting night. And again, you know, this football team. The, the guys that we have coming back, I mean, Octavian Osby. Hey, talk about some of them. Uh, Octavian Osby, I'm going to tell you right now, to me, he is 
definitely top two in the county. Possibly the best. I don't want to sound like a homer, but possibly the best running back He's in amazing. this county. He, you know, as a sophomore last year, over 1,300 total yards. I mean, this, and this young man is he's only getting better. He's only getting better. He's he's uh, eats weights in the weight room. I mean, he's a, he, that's why he has D one offers, right? Because he is he is that that dude. And and uh, I'm just so excited to see his maturation. And you know, we 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 get back some guys that that were banged up. One, one thing I'm very excited about is, you know, now now we have we have Daniel uh, on one side. Oh man! Uh, of the of the D line last year, we had a, a young man named Markel Gowans who yeah. was an outstanding player for us. When you put those two guys off the edge, I, I'm going to tell you right now, this defense is going. I'm so excited. We got a we got a kid, a, a Emmanuel Small, who who, who transferred in um, from uh, from Holy Trinity, and uh, he's already he's already taken over this defense. Yeah, and, he's and, a great player and made it made it his and. Uh, you know, so we're excited about having him. We get all of our DBs basically returning, and Andrew Young, who who I think is one of the most underrated players in this county. Uh, last year, he had two picks against Rockledge. Uh, both of them set up touchdowns. Uh, he is he is, and he's getting looked at by by schools. I mean, he is going to be a, a a young man. He's only going to be a junior, and he is a dude. And and. You know, we get Alex. Alex Petit was banged up in the spring. We didn't have him for the spring, so now we get Alex back. Again, you, you, we add Daniel back, Kyrie Harris, Markel Crawford, some of those guys. We, we move uh, Crawford over to defense now, and uh, we're excited about that. This offensive line. I was going to say, you're big. Oh. Huge. Oh, huge. You're 320 average. Listen, this offensive line that we have, and the, you know what, this is the crazy thing. They're all underclassmen. Allen at three twenty. They're all underclassmen. I mean, and, and this group has been together. Coach Gullah, who is our, our new old line coach, because uh, Dan now has moved over to defense, which he's all excited about. Yeah. But um, this new old line coach, Coach Gullah, that that we were lucky enough to get from Dr. Phillips, he has done such an outstanding job with this group of, of young men. They have worked so hard together, and you're going to see that consistency. Something we didn't have last year in the offensive line. We had size, but we didn't have consistency. We didn't have the same guys going out there every week playing together. And this group is very close, and they have worked their tails off. I am so excited to get guys back like Robert Hugger uh, and and Hayden Smith. Now he's he's shown us so much, and and now we've moved o- Oscar Castillo over to uh, to offensive line. He's you know he's a kid that squats almost six hundred pounds. I mean the, <laughs> the, these guys are they're big and they're nasty and. You know, just, they want to eat. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, he's really excited. It's Octavian Osby. Yeah, right. You know what I mean, <laughs> Osby, Osby is loving this group because sure. he sees he sees the work that they're putting in, and and he knows that their success is going to lead to his success. Right. And, but it's just a, a great group of of guys, man. I just absolutely love all of these young men that we have. Um, they're just an outstanding group, man. It's it's exciting. They have some pretty good coaches. You have stacked this uh, program like a college. Uh, essentially, it is essentially what you've done here. You get on the list: Dan Burke, Mitchell Brown, Roger Dixon, Brian Bender, Melvin Bird, Montrevious Nellums, Demetrius Williams, Matt Blackman, Stuart Brown, Tony Gullah, Alan Smith, Jaheim Mays, Reggie Williams, Stephon Johnson. If I forgot anybody, I apologize. But coach, that is position for position. Um, that's important. It's important, right? And I think you see on there too, two two coaches at every position. Yeah, and, and that's something that's very important to me. Is you know the more the more eyes out there, they got to be good eyes, right? They got to be good coaches, and that staff speaks for itself. But we have we have guys that that played at the highest level, played in the NFL. We got a bunch of guys that played D one football. I mean, these guys they they understand. I'll, I'll tell you this, and. and I would put my coaching staff up against any in, in well, maybe the state of Florida. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you, first of all, what you've done uh, at Space Coast and, and, and now what you're doing here, uh, but you could stop at Dan Burke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coach, what is the and – and we've talked about the players, but there is the off-the-field stuff. And I know you don't have to concentrate and focus on all the things you had to do last year. But what's the next part of the blueprint for you to get back to the glory days of Palm Bay football? To win. Yeah. Okay. To win. I mean, that's, that's where we are now. I mean, right. you know, we, we, have, we have laid the foundation. 
right? And, and I, I'm, uh, you know, everything is in place. You know, we, we have the best stadium in the county, the best field in the county. We got some of the best facilities. Best press box in the county. Best love press, press, love the press box. Uh, and I'll tell you what, too. Our, administra- our administration team and our principal and our athletic director and, and every all those other pieces that people don't see, the behind-the-scenes stuff, are so supportive. And that's what you got to have. That's where it starts to win football games is having that support. And, and, and Mr. Kaminsky and, and Mr. Crowley and Mr. Fahey, uh, Miss Owens, and that entire administrative staff and the support staff and the faculty is so supportive. You know, uh, Coach Morano and, and, and Coach Ballard. She's and, awesome. Yeah, she's, they're both awesome, and, 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 and we're all there for each other. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a big part of this thing. And the, and, the, and the players see it. The kids see it from all the sports. We're, we're there to support each other. That's where it starts. And we've built this foundation now with our football team where they understand this is the expect. The expectation is to win football games. And they understand that. You know, they understand that now. We – we threw them to the fire last year, but now, now they are going to come out of that fire like <laughs> baptism with, by fire. Yeah, I mean, what I mean, is. and they're and they're going to come and they're going to come out on top. I mean, th- th- right. this this group of young men they understand now what it means to win football games at this level, and they understand that is the expectation. The expectation is not to win five or six games and be happy. The expectation is to win the district, to win to win all of our regular season games and make a run for the state championship. And, and that is, that is our goal every year at Palm Bay high school. And that's, that's the history that's been laid. And that's the history that's been laid, right? That's the foundation that's been laid. And that's now what we have. We feel like we have brought that back. You know, we, we have brought, brought back that, that foundation that Dan, that Dan started all those years ago where, the expectation at Palm Bay High School is to win. Right. That's the expectation. And uh, you're right. I mean, that's a piece of it. And the other piece is to get these, to get these guys into the college, college and play football. You know, we, right. had, we had six seniors this year that are going off to play college football. We already have seven guys that are offered with our 23s and 24s. Wow. And I can tell you there's going to be more. There's going to be more coming. Of course there is. You know, so, yeah. so we're excited about that. It, this – the goal is, and I think I told you this when I got hired, the goal is to Palm Bay should be the mecca of high school football in this county, and that's what we want to get back to. I tell you what, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I love the fact that from a competitive standpoint that you and Coco are in that same district. Oh, I'm so because, excited. Because it's the two schools in this county um, in terms of, and then Rockledge is in there as well. I mean, you know, you look at Rockledge and, and what they did back in the early 2000s, too. They were right there with uh, – Palm Bay winning state championships back to back. In fact, it was Palm Bay in 2000 and 2002, and Rockledge in 2002 and 2003. No, 2004, I think, two, or something like that. 2001, 2002, right? So, you know, the, those three schools definitely, absolutely, the the pendulum that swings in this county for no doubt about it. Um, very excited for Coach, but Coach, uh, you know. You went to the Super Bowl, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Tell me about that. It was awesome. We I mean, talked about it. I know we talked about it, but you're, it's not often that a lifelong fan of a team, and look, I'm not knocking the Bengals, but they, you know, they've had their issues <laughs> over the years to think no that they – No more, Alan, no, no more. I know, I know. <laughs> but you get an opportunity to go watch them play. Not everybody gets to do that. Talk no, about it was, that. It was experience. awesome. I mean – I'm still I'm still paying for it, <laughs> but worth absolutely it. worth it. I mean, I've been a Bengal fan for over 40 years, so you know to to, to have that opportunity to go watch them play and and uh, you know I mean obviously to, to, uh, to should, should have won a game, but um, it, it, that part was heartbreaking. But but to be there, I mean, it was and it to was meet a, some of your heroes. Oh yeah, and uh, you know the the night before the night before uh, one of my good friends up in Cincinnati he he threw a he threw a, a, a pre-Super Bowl party the night before, and a bunch of the 88 Bengals were there, the last Bengal team that went to the Super Bowl. And so Icky Woods, all those guys, Stanford yeah, Jennings. Icky and, Shuffle, and baby. Reggie Kelly, all those guys, and Ronnie Holman and Isaac Curtis. I mean, I got to hang out with all these guys I grew up watching as a kid, and uh, it was just an incredible experience. And, and uh, yeah, it's one I'll never forget, and hopefully hopefully there's going to be more. Um, you know, because I, I, I told my wife, I'm like, listen, for, I, I can't not not go now. 
you know what I mean? And and uh, but I'm excited because I, I don't want to throw any anything bad out no, there. But no, I got family no. that live in Arizona, so I'm very excited. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm very uh-oh, excited. Uh oh. Um, we just need to get our quarterback signed, and uh, we'll see from there. Uh, we're, <laughs> by the way, we're previewing the AFC North Tuesday. I'd love to have you on the show. Oh, yeah. So I'll it? send you the video yeah, link because I definitely got to hear what uh, Joey Cool is going to be up to uh, <laughs> this year. Coaches, we get set to wrap it up here. I just want to put your schedule back up uh, on the board again, and uh, where to go here. Uh, not an easy one, that's for sure. I lost it. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay. So, okay, there we go. Uh, Bayside, Heritage, Harmony, Titusville, uh, Fort Pierce, Astronaut, Melbourne, Space Coast, Coco, Sebastian, River. Coach, I think you have an outstanding shot to do with this program, what exactly it is you want to do with it. And I know that all eyes are geared towards that October 28th game. And even before that, Coach, because you got a tough one against Melbourne, too. Not to discourage. And Heritage. I mean, Heritage is going to be one of those teams. And that- those, are, those are both get-back games for us. Yes. Yeah, th- those were two games that we felt like we, we gave away uh, that we should have won last year. So we're, we are, I promise you, we are very excited to – Get the opportunity to play those two football I, I had, teams. I had Coach Broomfield here tonight. It's going to be interesting to see you guys uh, match up because he's got some great wide receivers. You've got some great DBs. It's going to be a lot of fun this year in this county. I, I'm excited. I, I, I mean, how awesome is it that we're talking about this right now? I mean, we're, we're less than three weeks away right. You know, from hitting the field and, and getting started. And, and uh, I can tell you, my guys, uh, the, the Palm Bay Pirates, are they are chomping at the bit. Um, the the excitement you could just feel the excitement in the weight room on the field. You could you can feel it even in the school when when I, I walk around even during the summer. You know the the faculty and the support staff and everybody everybody yeah. understands the potential of this football team and and the potential of of what we should do this year. And but we got to go out and execute. Yeah. I mean that that's the thing is you know again you can have all the talent in the world but you got to go out and you got to execute. On all three phases of the game, and uh, but as like I said, this this group of young men, there's definitely a chip on everybody's shoulder, and uh, you know that 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 can be a very dangerous thing in a good way. You know they say that college football is better when teams like USC and Penn State, and that when teams and programs like that are competing for championships. The same is for Palm Bay. Absolutely. You know, I agree 100%. It is the same thing for Palm Bay High Absolutely. School. So no doubt about it. Coach, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys yeah. for everything you do. You I, know how I feel about that. I, I you know. guys do such a great job. We, we, you know, we love you guys down there and uh, looking forward to that Bayside game for sure. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to you guys coming out and. Again, man, have a have a good luck on your season. I know, yeah. I know you're you're a very busy, man. All over the place. Uh, we'll get you up here or wherever. Or the we're going to talk to you about the post game show coming up. Uh, Got to get you to the post game shows this year. Oh, absolutely. Once you knock down absolutely a couple of these wins, get to the post game. Absolutely, show. we definitely will be here. All right, coach. Thank you so much. Thanks, again. Oh, uh, yep. Go uh, Pirates. Go, go Pirates. Pirates. Just don't say go Bengals. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll be right back to wrap it up because we got some very very important things to say. We'll be right back. All right. All right, welcome back as we get set to wrap up here. Great week here. Next week uh, we headline with guys like Chris Sands from O'Galley, Hurley Brown from Holy Trinity, Tyler Murray, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. Stay tuned to Brevard Sports Network. Uh, we are going to do the coaches' shows here at Walk-Ons. Uh, 
but the post game deal has fallen through with uh, walk ons this year. So we are in search. Uh, if we have to do it, some if we have to do it at the studios, we'll do it at the studios. It is what it is. But we promise you, every Friday night you'll have that post game show. We just would like to be able to do it from an atmosphere like this uh, here. So uh, if you know anybody interested in hosting the post game shows this year, reach out to Brevard Sports Network and. Uh, We'll definitely make it worth their while and certainly uh, make it happen. So I want to thank all of the coaches here tonight, uh, Jake Owens, Corey Broomfield, Justin Warden, David Kintai, and Ryan Schneider. I want to thank my man behind the camera producing tonight's show, uh, Mr. Caleb Brown. So for all of these great head coaches, very excited to come back next week right here on BSN with two of the three coaches' shows live from walk-ons here. So... For Caleb Brown, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network. Have a great night, and as always, make it a sports night.